Rosemarine Dlovu, a name now synonymous with heinous crimes, was born in the year 1978 and was a former member of the South African police force. Her journey, however, took a dark turn as she became a convicted murderer. Her actions resulted in the death of six individuals, including her own partner and a relative. Intentions were not only to take their lives, but also to live off their life and insurance policies. Such was her greed that she collected over 1.4 million rands before her arrest. Despite her attempts to evade the hands of justice, the long arm of the law finally caught up with her. Her arrest in 2021 led to her being tried and subsequently convicted of the murders. The court sentenced her to six concurrent life terms for her gruesome actions. The extent of her crimes did not stop at just the murders. She was also found guilty of four counts of fraud, leading to her receiving a further sentence of 10 years. Additionally, she had been involved in inciting individuals to commit murder, for which she got another 10 years for each count. Her mother, Maria Mushawana, was also a target of her vicious plans, which resulted in her being handed another 10-year sentence for attempted murder. Nomia's actions were nothing short of horrific, and justice was rightly served. Her case sends a strong message that greed and a thirst for money can lead individuals down a dark, dangerous path, with severe consequences. It is a reminder that the law will not tolerate such heinous crimes, and individuals who commit them will face the full force of the law. Nomia Rosemarine Dlovu, the intriguing subject of this tale, drew her first breath in the township of Thembasa, Gorting's most prosperous province, at some point in 1978. It was here, in the bustling heart of this vibrant province, that she spent her formative years, weaving her way through the labyrinthine streets and alleys of her hometown as well as navigating the complex and often dangerous social dynamics that characterized life in the townships of South Africa during that time. Her mother, Maria Mushawana, was a formidable woman in her own right, known for her unwavering dedication to her family and the fierce love that she had for her daughter. She instilled in young Nomia a sense of pride in her heritage and a deep respect for the traditions and customs of her ancestors. Nomia grew up with a deep understanding of her place in the world and a profound appreciation for the struggles and triumphs of those who had come before her. Despite the challenges that she faced, Nomia was a vivacious and spirited young woman with a quick wit and a disarmingly charming smile. She had a keen intellect and a natural curiosity about the world around her, which led her to explore new ideas which some were unlawful. As she emerged into adulthood, Nomia continued to cultivate her passions and interests, immersing herself in the arts, music, and literature of her culture. She became a beacon of hope and inspiration to those around her known for her indomitable spirit and her unwavering commitment to the pursuit of her dreams. Rosemary had always been drawn to the idea of serving her community as a law enforcement officer. She was a dedicated individual who was driven by a sense of justice and a desire to make a difference. After completing her training, she joined the South African Police Service with great enthusiasm. As she began her career, Rosemary was posted at the Tembiza police station, an area that had a reputation for being a challenging and dangerous place to work in. Nevertheless, Rosemary remained undaunted, and she threw herself into her work with a fierce determination. 
Over time, Rosemary proved herself to be an exceptional officer. Her colleagues respected her for her unwavering commitment to her duties, and many looked up to her as a role model. As a result, it was no surprise when she was promoted to the rank of sergeant, a position that she had worked hard to achieve. Despite her many achievements, however, Rosemary had a secret that few people knew about. She had a gambling problem that she had struggled with for many years. At times, she would even bunk out of work to avoid loan sharks who were pressuring her to pay off her debts. While her addiction never affected her work performance, it did cause her colleagues to worry about her well-being. Many of them tried to offer support and encouragement, but Rosemary was too ashamed to admit that she needed help. Instead, she continued to struggle with her addiction in silence, hoping that she could overcome it on her own. Despite the challenges that Rosemary faced, she remained a dedicated and committed officer. Her story is a testament to the resilience and strength of those who serve their communities in law enforcement, as well as a reminder that even the strongest people can sometimes need help. As the story goes, the first victim on Rosemary's list of murders was none other than her cousin, Madola Witness Homu. A promising young woman with a bright future, Witness was found brutally beaten to death in Oliphantsfontein her lifeless body left to be discovered by unsuspecting passers-by. It was a tragic end for a young life that held so much promise and left many in her community reeling with shock and disbelief. But for Rosemary, the tragic death of her cousin was just the beginning. Not content with a single murder, she would go on to claim the lives of several more victims, each one grislier and horrifying than the last. And with each murder, Rosemary's motives became more and more sinister, her thirst for blood and money driving her to ever more depraved acts of violence. As it turns out, the murder of Witness was not just a senseless act of violence, but part of a larger scheme to cash in on her insurance policy. With Witness out of the way, Rosemary stood to receive a windfall of over 131,000 rands a sum that would be more than enough to fuel her obsession with killing and satisfy her twisted desires. It's a chilling reminder of the darkness that can lurk within the human soul, a cautionary tale of how greed and ambition can drive even the most seemingly innocent among us to commit unspeakable acts of violence. And as the story of Rosemary's reign of terror continues to unfold, it serves as a grim reminder of the fragility of life and the importance of staying vigilant against those who would do us harm. The tragic news of Audrey Glover's untimely death sent shockwaves through her family and friends. Her younger sister, Nomia, was especially devastated by the loss. The two sisters had always been close, and Audrey had been like a mother figure to Nomia. Upon further investigation, it was discovered that Audrey had been poisoned and strangled, leading to her tragic death. The details of the investigation were harrowing, and Nomia struggled to come to terms with what had happened to her beloved sister. In the midst of her grief, Nomia was informed that she would receive 717 421,000 rands in insurance from Audrey's demise. While the insurance payout would never replace the love and support that Audrey had provided, the financial assistance did ease some of the burden that came with losing a family member. However, the insurance payout was bittersweet for Nomia, as she couldn't help but wonder what could have been done to prevent her sister's death. She vowed to do everything in her power to find out who was responsible for Audrey's murder and bring them to justice. Despite the overwhelming sadness and grief that consumed Nomia, she remained determined to honor her sister's memory and ensure that justice was served. The journey ahead would not be easy, but Nomia knew that she had to be strong for herself and her family. In a tragic turn of events, Zanil mother was found lifeless, her body bearing the signs of a brutal assault. 
As the investigation proceeded, it became clear that she had been mercilessly beaten to death, leaving a pall of sorrow and anguish in the hearts of her loved ones and the community at large. The sheer cruelty of the act was unfathomable, and it was difficult for anyone to comprehend how someone could inflict such heinous violence upon another human being. As the family mourned the untimely loss of their beloved daughter, niece, and friend, the weight of the tragedy was compounded by the knowledge that justice had to be done. It was a small comfort to know that the perpetrators would be held accountable, but no amount of punishment could bring back their precious Zanil. Against this backdrop, Rosemary, Zanil's aunt, was informed that she would receive a sum of approximately 119,800 rands in insurance for her niece's demise. The events that unfolded in the lives of these individuals are nothing short of tragic. It was later in the month of October in 2015, that the heartbreaking news of Maurice Mabasa's murder hit the headlines. He was the boyfriend and father to Maini Mashaba's child. The details surrounding his demise were gruesome. He was found with over 80 stab wounds and his body was unceremoniously dumped in Oliphant's Fontaine. Fast forward to 2017, tragedy struck again, when Maini Mashaba herself was found lifeless in the very same Oliphant's Fontaine area where Mabasa's body had been discovered two years prior. Her death came shortly after a meeting with Ndlovu, who himself would meet a similar fate not long after. Adding to the already devastating events, it was uncovered that Ndlovu had a hand in the death of her own nephew, brilliant Mashigo, who was also the son of Audrey. The young boy was last seen alive in Ndlovu's company on the 22nd of January 2018 in Bushbuckridge. The circumstances surrounding his death remain a mystery, but it is clear that Ndlova's involvement in these tragedies is nothing short of chilling. It was a dark day in the South Gorting High Court in Johannesburg, as the fate of Rosemary Ndlova was sealed. Her years of deceiving her family and everyone around her had caught up with her. The sentence of six life terms was handed down to her for her heinous crimes. Ndlovu had orchestrated the murder of her partner and five family members to claim insurance payouts from policies she had taken out for them. The Palm Ridge Magistrates Court was filled with a sense of tension and an air of despair as Judge Ramarumo Monama sentenced Ndlovu. The morning was consumed with arguments in mitigation and aggravation of sentence, leaving everyone on edge. As the judge delivered the verdict, the room was filled with a deafening silence. Ndlova was sentenced to life in prison for each of the six murder counts. The gravity of her crimes was not lost on the court, and neither was the sheer brutality of her actions. It was a moment that sent shivers down the spine of every individual present in the room. The sentence did not end there as Ndlova was handed an additional five years for defeating the ends of justice and ten years on each of the four counts of fraud. She was also sentenced to ten years, imprisonment for each count of incitement to commit murder and ten years for the attempted murder of her mother. Judge Monama was clear in his assessment of Ndlova's character, stating that she was not remorseful and was manifestly involved in the killing of her own relatives because their deaths meant money came her way. Her actions, in his opinion, were motivated purely by greed and a lack of moral compass. The accused monetized the lives of her relatives, she saw them as a commodity. The lawlessness in which she carried out her criminality threatens the very existence of society, Judge Monama said. The judge's words were poignant and carried a sense of finality. He remarked that Ndlovu needed to be removed from society for a long time. It was a moment that will be etched in the memory of all those present in the courtroom for years to come. The law had spoken, and justice had been served. Yes, to profit. Yeah. And 
it was based on circumstantial. Yeah. So I look at the man at the heart of this thing was happening. Yeah. Then I became suspicious. Yeah. And from that I didn't look back. When I went forward yeah. up until I compiled all the documents, then I arrested the suspect, brought it to court and today I'm here, I'm done. It's been a fun day. Next week, you might use a toilet next week. As it is Friday. So, the table is Friday. Eight. She shall have that. That's it. Now, my message is a little. Now, for a little touch, her was a business. This is an English bum. Mess <laughs> 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 